How do you upgrade walls fast? That is a question I am asked all of the time, so let's tell you everything there is to know. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Judo Sloth. The first thing you need to know about upgrading your walls fast is you always need at least one builder left over. All I mean by that is no matter what town hall level you are, or no matter how many builders you have unlocked, if you want to upgrade your walls as fast as possible, make sure one of them is not working. That way you can dump excess gold and elixir into the walls. Now don't get me wrong, if you have just started the game, build times are incredibly fast, you might just want to upgrade whatever, enjoy the game, but as you start progressing through the town hall levels, you know how much of a grind walls are, and I think that's where I get the question a lot, so I wanted to help you guys in a video, because I like to bring educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos, so if that's the type of content you like to see, I would recommend subscribing and also turning on the notification bell. Before I move on to the next tip, because I think I've made it pretty clear you need to save onto a builder, because walls do require a builder, even though it is an instant build time. So if you do not have one left over, you are stuck with all of your loot until one becomes available. And one of the ways that you will be upgrading your walls fast is by actively farming as much as possible to bring in as much loot as possible. I will help you with my recommended farming army later in the video, but it is important to know that it is dependent on how many builders you have. If you only had two builders, you might be a little bit more lenient. Use both of them to upgrade buildings. Otherwise, it's going to take you forever to upgrade your base. But if you have all five builders, it's a lot easier to save onto one of them for the walls. And it's even easier if you unlock the sixth builder. So my advice would be to rush the builder's base. I have a video explaining how to get the sixth builder as fast as possible that video and any other relevant ones will be in the video description i always make sure to put other videos related to the one you are watching in the video description right i think we've established probably the most important tip actually that you do need to save on to a builder i also want to highlight before we go over the other tips that walls do get very expensive up to six million at maximum level which is currently level 14 mine is displayed as 5.4 because i have the 10 percent discount from the gold pass but basically upgrading your walls to a maximum level especially at town hall 13 is a long haul no matter how fast you do it it will take you a long time so you have to stick with it and you have to be patient that is important but you can apply the best practices so let's go over the other tips Whilst we are on the subject of the gold pass, let's give you that tip. Always be sure to take advantage of the perks, in specific, the builder boost. This is important no matter what you are trying to upgrade because you get a significant discount. Now, I gave you the tip at the start of the month when the gold pass reset, but always make sure when you get your season bank to unlock the 10% builder boost. It's normally about the third or the fourth unlock, and it is around about 120 to 160 season challenge points. But with the 10% discount, when you get all of the loot, up to 50 million, it means that you can upgrade your base so much more effectively. And well, it means that you can get 10% extra walls upgraded. I've jumped back across to my Town Hall 9 because I have the Mass Baby Dragon Attack strategy cooked up. And this would be my recommendation for you to upgrade your walls as fast as possible. It was my number one farming strategy within my top five farming strategies video. Don't get me wrong, you could use any strategy from with that video, but I always feel the Mass Baby Dragons is the most effective. Now I will teach you how to use this strategy at the end of the video, but the reason I'm going to teach it at the end is there are other tips and some of you might already know how to use the Baby Dragons. You just want to know the tips to upgrade your walls. So I do always have videos chapters so you can just skip ahead to the relevant sections for you but that's why i'm going to teach you the strategy right at the end and give you the other tips now 
So I want to shift the attention across to the trader and the clan games because right now in the daily deals there is the training portion. This is very important for you to farm. I did mention that the best way to upgrade your walls as fast as possible is have that extra builder but the reason you have the extra builder is so that when you are farming and gaining resources you can spend the resources on the walls. Now in order to farm more effectively you can use the training portion to cook up troops even faster and whenever you are using an attack strategy such as the mass baby dragons which is very easy to use very quick to gain loot you can do a lot more raids plus it's a lot more manageable for you it means that you can spend one hour just farming and farming fast because the baby dragons will be cooked up quick you can get out into multiplayer again and again and often within that hour you might be able to fill your storages depending on your town hall level which means you can then upgrade a lot of walls with that because lower down in the levels the walls are a lot cheaper on my town hall 12 here you can actually see that some of the walls are only 1 million and that's actually a level 11 wall I know that's under leveled for a town hall 12 this is the base that I have tried to recover that we rushed and basically walls are actually actually my least priority but this video is about upgrading them fast so I would be using a farming strategy that can utilize the training portion well and allow you to just farm quick get the storages full so that you can spend the loot don't get me wrong you don't actually have to fill your storages you can upgrade the wall as soon as you are ready to but you need to have enough elixir in order to train up the army again you don't want to get in the situation where you don't have the elixir to train up your farming army and you are essentially stuck for a little while but my point is the training portion can be very valuable in order to make sure you can farm faster and it also makes things manageable like I said this is a long haul it's not a case of just blazing it for a couple of days and then you get yourself sick you are going to have to stick with this it is something that you kind of just chip away at if you will but the other thing I want to mention is always be aware of when your builders will finish this is something that I mentioned in both of my videos on how to upgrade your base fast and how to upgrade your heroes fast but you need to know when your builders finish because in my opinion I should stop upgrading walls and start saving my resources allowing my storages to stack up so that as soon as one of my my builders not the builder that I have reserved for walls but as soon as one of my other builders are finished I need to have enough resources in order to build again one of the new upgrades I feel from what I just said I might get the question what happens if all of my buildings are complete for my current town hall level it is just walls I am waiting on my advice would be it depends on what you want but for the most part for people that just want to progress through the game I would just upgrade your town hall level because to upgrade effectively it is all about builder management making sure that your builders are constantly working so if you are only able to upgrade walls and you have five or potentially six builders just sitting there doing nothing I would upgrade the town hall because you can always upgrade the walls later on I want to go back to the trader because there is something else that you need to know hopefully that last section did make sense you can always ask me any questions in the comments or drop by my live streams on Twitch if you do have any further questions on Clash of Clans. But with regards to the trader, sometimes you might see wall rings being purchasable from the trader. Personally, I do not think they are good value in order to purchase with the gems. I do feel that wall rings have an important place though obviously to upgrade your walls fast so the wall rings are a magic item that let you upgrade your walls now it is important to know that one wall ring is the equivalent of 1 million gold or elixir in the home village it's different for the builders base but what that means is that you should try and use them on a wall that is at least 1 million if you are a lower town hall level you're far better off if you can unless you're 
maxed on the capacity to save onto the wall rings until you get to a wall that costs 1 million. Because if you upgrade a wall that is, let's say, 100,000 gold, it still costs one wall ring. So you are wasting 900,000 gold from that wall ring. So do be effective and efficient with how you are using them. Now you can achieve wall rings from the clan games. I cannot show you at the moment. The caravan is not there because the clan games are not currently ongoing. However, for the rewards, make sure you are keeping an eye for wall rings. I personally always get them because if they are in a tier with, let's say, gold or elixir, sometimes you will be offered 1 million gold, but a couple of wall rings, which is obviously much better value. The other thing is to keep an eye on the events tab because there is often events. You can see the Jai Barch coming up in one day's time, which will offer you magic items, even if it is not the wall rings. Sometimes we are offered wall rings, but even if it's not, it will still help. We might get resource potions or training potions, something that can help you with farming, upgrading your base and walls in general. Another way that you can obtain wall rings is via the Clan Wall League medals shop. Now I did a video, a complete guide on what items you should pick based on your town hall level, but in summary for town hall 9 and below, I would choose the research potion and builder potions, and above that the hammers. Once your base is maxed, you can look at the gold elixir or wall rings to upgrade anything else. Now because I've already mentioned one wall ring is 1 million gold or elixir, let's take a look at the value. 2.5 million gold or elixir for 25 medals. 50 medals gets you 10 wall rings. So that's 10 million. So clearly, once you have passed the point of needing hammers, the wall rings are pretty good value from the Clan Wall League medal shop, way better than the gold or elixir. If you are going to be purchasing anything in the shop, sometimes there are packs which offer wall rings as part of that, and some of them can be pretty good value. If you are going to be purchasing anything in Clash of Clans, remember you can help to support your favorite content creator by entering their code within your settings. My code is judo and it is much appreciated my friends we are pretty much ready to teach you the mass baby dragon attack strategy very very effective if you are below a town hall 9 within my top 5 farming attacks video i did mention that the barch strategy will serve you well but honestly you probably don't need to really worry about walls too much until you get slightly higher level a couple of other points that i would bring to your attention is do not forget about the lab when you are solely focused on upgrading your walls and managing of your builders. Always remember that you do have upgrades within the lab. It's very easy to forget about them, so make sure you're keeping an eye on it. It might just be that instead of upgrading walls with Elixir, you do realize that your lab upgrade is ready to finish in a couple of days, so you start saving for your next lab upgrade. The other thing that I would mention is with regards to trophy leagues. Now, I did a video on all of this, but I would recommend you try and find dead bases that are easy to farm the collector style raids so you can just take the mines and pumps on the outside you get more loot from that anyway from my experience you can gain that from the gold and crystal leagues if you start to need more dark elixir you might want to push up into the masters league but for the most part i have found even right of the way up to town hall 12 and 13 gold into crystal league gives you a ton of dead bases now it's not the only option you can farm as you wish Wish, but my recommendation would be to try and find the dead bases within those trophy leagues. Here we go. This was literally three searches until I found this base. Nearly one million gold and elixir. Now, if you are trying to upgrade your walls fast, it is all gold and elixir that you are searching for. And that's why I think the baby dragons is the best strategy. It's not brilliant for dark elixir, but for gold and elixir, they are beautiful. I like to take lightning spells. You can actually just lightning the dark elixir drills if they are deeper into the base, or you can use the lightning to take down air defense or any other point defense if you think your baby dragons will struggle. So actually, let's use a couple of them onto that lightning, uh, onto the 
Onto that lightning, onto that air defense. I missed the Archer Queen. I was trying to get damage onto the Archer Queen, but whatever. Let's now deploy baby dragons, and it's relatively easy. Should we take that air defense as well? Let's do it with the Archer Tower, and there we go. You can always try and get damage onto other buildings that would hurt your baby dragons. Now, you don't have to use the lightning spells. You can just use the baby dragons, but if you are worried about not getting all of the loot or not getting majority of the loot you can indeed use the lightning spells to help also you can use your king and queen to get deeper into the base i am purely circling the base right now or circulating the base should i say with baby dragons and to be honest this is not the most proficient i'm trying to explain to you at the same time how to use the strategy it's not always the easiest but you do want to try and focus on the mines and pumps before you start focusing in on the storages and actually i should be sending more baby dragons in because as the air defense is firing at one of them obviously the other baby dragon is getting into that area unscathed but as we take a look around the base now, if I were to push my king and queen in from the top, they may be able to get pretty good value. And another point here that I would like to make is you don't have to use all of your troops. You can actually save onto as many of the baby dragons as appropriate in order to make your farming as effective if you're not going to get return on your golden elixir then you don't have to spend the baby dragons in order to get in there now can the queen get that elixir storage she can i'm just trying to get everything here for the sake of it let's use the lightning and the bat spell just to you know, have fun that bat spell might be able to help getting the air defense but ultimately it's not that clan castle e-drag is doing a phenomenal job in the center of the base do we even try and get the town hall it might be easier to get the town hall you know than the storages because the town hall is a storage in itself once we take this archer tower down we can take the town hall now again this hasn't been the most fluent tutorial of the baby dragons i've been talking the entire time whilst deploying them but if you do want to see a tutorial of the baby dragons a little bit better in depth than this one then you can also check out my top five farming attack strategies video come on baby dragons get that town hall take it down i've deployed too many of them are they going to get it oh no come on let's get the town hall let's at least get the two star we don't get all of the loot for this base but at least we get a good chunk of it should have maybe deployed something else down there. But anyways, I hope this video has been helpful. If you do want to see the baby dragons taught a little bit more fluid than that random attack and other farming strategies you can use, you can always check out my top five farming attacks video here. The subscribe button is also on your screen, my friends. I do appreciate your support. I hope this one has helped you enjoy the rest of your day and I will catch you in the next video.